Hey, yeah. Coming at you today with a little bit of a different kind of video. Well, no, actually, it's the same as all my other videos. <laughs> if you like it, like the thumbs up thing. If you hate it, put the thumbs down thing. And please subscribe so that I can have more than 200 people. I want 2,000 people, and then I want 20,000, and then I want 200,000. So can you help me? How to think about in filmmaking and production, in art in general, like whether you're... Honestly, this applies to fine art, music, authors, books, filmmaking, script writing, right? Directing, you know, if you're a writer-director. Uh, producing to a certain extent, because if you're the originator of the idea and stuff. Now, the producers tend to be a little bit more like business um, oriented, they tend to think a little bit more down the lines of, well, uh, distribution, what's the model, who's the demographic, who, is, who are we making this movie for, and all that. Now, I have another video where I talk about how to think about, you know, creating features, how to make uh, movies, and where to start with it, right? So, I say there that you kind of need to have the end goal in mind. So, I wanted to make a video that doesn't contradict it, but almost challenges that thought, and here's why. Um, that is an important thing to consider. Um, now, there's a mas you know, there's that Masterclass series, and I think on one of the trailers that I saw, and I've taken a lot of them, uh, it, they're, they're interesting and informative to a certain extent. They don't really give you a whole lot to, to actually go out and make a movie with or, or get into the industry with. But I think one thing I, I heard Scorsese say uh, in the intro to his master class was like, if you're trying to get into the business of filmmaking, I can't help you. Uh, but if you're trying to make a uh, master movie, whatever, like, I, I don't remember, like some piece of art, kind of rubbed me the wrong way because I hear that a lot. And I respect Scorsese a lot. I think what he's done is amazing. A lot of, a lot of good films, obviously. Um, but he has look. Let's look at his filmography. You know what I mean. So here, here's what I want to bring to the challenge. Uh, I want to challenge. Um, so Scorsese, Scorsese. Okay. Now, obviously, we know he did, you know, Goodfellas and things like that. But let's see. Let's 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 go in director, right? Vesuvius. Don't know what that is, but it's, uh, it looks like a short film he did. Um, that was the first thing that's on IMDb. And then you have... Um, what a nice girl like you doing in a place like this. Short. It's not just you, Murray. Short. New York City. Melting Point. Documentary. Who's that knocking at my door? The Big Shave. Short. Street Scenes, Documentary, Boxcar, Berta, Mean Streets, right? Italian-American, Alice Don't Live Here Anymore, Taxi Driver, right? That's, we know Taxi Driver. New York, New York, The Last Waltz, American Boy, um, Raging Bull, The King of Comedy, After Hours, Amazing Story, So Color of Money. Anyway, then it goes into, uh, you know, Color of Money, um, uh, The Last Temptation of Christ, I didn't realize that. Uh, New York Stories, Goodfellas, um, you know, it, you know a lot, a lot of different things, casino and all that stuff. Um, now again, he he he's done things like Hugo, right? He's done things that are sort of out of what I guess you would uh, know him for. But let, let's let's look at directors. Let's look at you know Scorsese and Tim Burton and Alfred Hitchcock. And you know, if you look at if you look deep enough, you know, people like bringing up Tarantino a lot. There's a definitive style. There's a definitive thing that they do, right? Scorsese's all about the Italian-American, New York sort of gangster type thing in general, right? I mean, I might be wrong, but that seems to be what he's kind of, his whole vibe is. He's that, that mobster director, right? Uh, New York City uh, streets kind of thing. Hitchcock's all about horror and thrillers, right? So, like, you, you, can, 
you can attribute certain genre types, you can attribute certain things and styles to their films. Now, of course, he'll go out and make a thing like Wolf of Wall Street, but there's a lot in that movie that plays on the, you know, there's similarities there. It's very hustler, it's very, I mean, you know, you've seen the movie, so there are elements to it that, you know, complement what he does. Now, how do you get started? There's different ways to get started. You need to prove your point, you need to prove your your ability to make something good. And, I, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull all these random thoughts together. I'm going to throw a bunch of things out there for you to consider first, right? When people tell you, I can't teach you how to get into the business of filmmaking, well, then they just haven't looked at their own careers very much and actually analyzed them. Because you might not be able to give somebody a clear path as to um, who, what specifically they should do, like what movie should you go out and write, what should you go out and pitch? What should you make? Should you do a short film? Should you submit it to festivals? Should you just write a script and pitch it and, 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 and get it optioned and, 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 and sell a bunch of scripts and then eventually make a movie? Like, should you uh, work for a studio and work your way up? Should you start producing? Wh- whatever you end up doing, your path, that's your path, right? There's a book called uh, Adventures in the Screen Trade by uh, William Goldman. He's the guy who wrote Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I recommend you read it. There's uh, some good analogies, some good ideas. Now, this is back in the day. You can't really compare Hollywood then as, uh, to, to Hollywood now, but a lot of the, the general principles are still very similar in that everybody kind of does it their own way, right? Everybody kind of grows into this industry their own way. Um, what am I saying with all this? <laughs> what I'm saying is it irks me to hear a guy like Scorsese say he can't, tell you how to get into the business of filmmaking. He can just help you make a good movie or whatever. Well, that just means that maybe, you know, there's two kinds of people who get successful. There's people who manifest success and don't really understand why, and they just get perpetuated down a certain path, and and, and it happens, and, and great. And then there's people who are analytical, and they realize, oh, this is what I did, and that's why, and this is what needs to happen for this to happen. And in general, if I stay over here, their chances are better, right? So I would challenge you to not be one of those people who just puts out random art, and 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 you know, sort of relies on other people to give them opportunities and and then just hopes for the best, and then maybe it'll happen again. Uh, be analytical, and don't necessarily get obsessed with studying people. I, I don't, like, I just know a lot of these directors that I've, I've watched their movies. I, I watch a lot of their movies. They tend to be very similar in, in tone, and um, so I look a little bit into their background, and I realize that, oh, well, th- there's sort of a pattern here. And when I told you in the other video, like, that you should have the end goal in mind, you should, you should keep that in mind, but here's the point of this video. There needs to be a balance between art and industry kind of thought, right? I think the best people, the best, the most successful people in this industry have a balance between understanding the business, the fact that the, the, the industry is a, an industry, and that there's a clear supply and demand uh, situation, and and the art, where they also understand that that the real hits, the real successes, are very unique, interesting films that are original and artistic and 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 good. And I, I don't care what anybody says about Hollywood films. At the end of the day, there's some really cool, interesting, moving awesome stuff that comes out of this uh, industry. I don't subscribe to the whole, well, it's not a real movie as if it doesn't have a, you know, a a tragic ending or some, uh, you know, sort of, I can't, like, personally, sorry, I can't watch French movies. Like, I just don't get them for the most part. Some of them are fine. I don't spend a lot of time watching them. I don't need reality. I don't need, uh, you know, to feel like, um, you know, I can talk over, over, you know, Cosmopolitans later about how uh, how wonderfully deep that dialogue was and how, you know, painful it was and all that. I, I like, I like to be entertained. I like, I think there's a good balance. I like crazy worlds. I like Avatar. I like Star Wars. I like Lord of the Rings. But I also like 
uh, Reservoir Dogs and uh, and uh, Django and I, I I like you know um, and I like old Orson Welles. I like Casablanca. You know, like it's just I love movies. Tell me a story. Put me in a new world. Show me something I've never seen before. But I also like Hurt Locker and I like things that are, are um, you know interesting slices of, of worlds that we uh, don't see as much, right? That are real, uh, or more real. And what I'm saying with all this is that you need to balance art and industry. You can't come into it thinking, I'm a genius and I have this story and everybody needs to care about my story. You have to consider the fact that you're making a film and you need to know that if you want success, people are going to have to watch and enjoy it. And they're going to have to like it and, and, and ideally recommend it to others. And so, nobody, here's where it gets a little bit like maybe what Scorsese said makes a little bit of sense. Nobody can tell you which script or what story is actually going to do that. Like, I, I'm surprised sometimes, like, books are a great example. I'm surprised at, like, the books that my wife reads. Where I, I look at the book and I'm like, what, so what exactly is this book? She's like, oh, no, it's just this lady's life who was, a, she was, like, a writer. And then she changed careers a bunch of times. And, uh, and then she became a therapist because she thought she wanted to help people. But then in doing therapy sessions, she, like, realized that... Um, that, you know, she she kind of had her own issues and stuff, and it's just kind of like this this lady's life, and I'm like, oh, wow, so who's this lady? Oh, just some lady, you know, like, just... So, to me, it's like, if you were to come to me, and I were a publishing house, and you said, hey, I'm a lady, I have a, a never made up, I've never been able to make up my mind about my career, I've had a fairly successful career writing and, and, and as a columnist, but then decided to become a shrink... And now that's confusing me. I wouldn't have necessarily said, you get yourself a deal. <laughs> I would be like, what are you on about? That's not a book. Um, but people read it. So it's, it's, it's about, like, does the book capture you? And, and, and that's where sometimes you just need to write, the, you just need to create the piece and, and put it out there. And, 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 and people will either, it'll either resonate with people or it won't. Um, other films that are a little bit more clear, a little bit more templatable, um, or a little bit more genre, like they're just clearly, you know, for fun, it's an action movie. Those are easier to get financed, okay? So this is where I'm, I'm coming into the, the art of art and balance, right? And we have another video where I talk a little bit about strategy and stuff, but really think about what your end goal is. Like, do you want to be a... Um, you know, do you want to be known as sort of like a certain, like just a director and you just have this crazy vision and, and you just want to commit yourself to, to that? Or do you want to kind of, do you enjoy being on set and just making content? Do you want it to be more of a business for you and you just create a lot of content? You want to make a lot of different movies? Um, because those things are going to determine, you know, what it is that you're going to go for. Because if you just want to pump out a lot of content and you just enjoy the process of making films, of being able to jump on set and, you know, be around it, then, uh, you know, creating a very specific kind of, like, niche, uh, you know, low-budget horror films and just making a lot of them is maybe the way to go. Whereas if you're really more of a person who just feels like they have a few stories that they want to get out and they need to be big and you know and if they never happen they never happen but if they happen then they need to be that way then create scripts that really um maybe haven't been done before at all and are, and are a little out there and that's going to be a bigger challenge to get them funded and to get off the ground but if somebody likes it you might get hit the right person at, with at the right time and it might happen. Um, it's just really tough to um, to get something crazy and out there off the ground without any sort of track record. So as you saw, this is going back to why I pointed out Scorsese having a series of short films and documentaries before he ever even got into like bigger filmmaking. Um, I think it's important, especially if you're more down the visionary path, 
that you create a couple of pieces, at least one um, short film or something, not because you want to sell the short film, but because you need to be able to show people what you can do. And it better be a friggin' amazing short. It better be actually amazing. Not a black and white art house film with a girl laying on the kitchen counter or crying over pancakes. It has to be something really out there and along the lines of what it is that you think you can bring to the world as a director or as a filmmaker. So the balance of art and business needs to constantly be in your mind. And I, I personally, and, and you can comment below if you have conflicting opinions about this, but it's a constant, like, this guy said this, and this girl said that, and she's all about branding and branding and branding, and this person's all about, no, just be yourself and just whatever. They're, they're kind of the same thing. It, it really, there shouldn't be two ways to look at it. There should just be the understanding that it's a creative industry that thrives when people purchase tickets or buy your film, right? So clearly, your artwork needs to resonate. And that's the same with uh, music and, and other things. So you don't just want to copy everybody else because uh, that they're succeeding with it because that's going to make you what we refer to as vanilla. It's going to make you just be like everybody else. So you could maybe have some moderate success with that, but maybe people will just listen to you because you have no traction yet and they'll listen to you if it's a music thing or, or watch your stuff if it's uh, videos or films, and just kind of say, well, this is, meh, you know, okay, fine. Um, that's not going to get you very far, I think. Um, but you also can't be so introverted and about yourself and about your art and hate the business side of things because then you're never going to connect with your audience. So you have to find that balance of unique innovation yet familiar enough and um, and, 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 and marketable enough to actually be attractive to distributors or to an audience if you self-distribute. I hope that helps. Find the balance. Uh, and, and, and actually, you know what? Let's sum it up for actors specifically. It goes for that too. You don't want to be so full of yourself as an actor and just artiste, artiste, artiste. Um, you want to understand that you fit into uh, a business model. And so it, it, it needs to be um, a bit of a give and take. Like, people will deal with crazy people on set if they're absolute geniuses, but I even, I, even, even that is only for a limited amount of time. Like, you can't come in and just feel like you're the end-all, be-all. You have to be a team player and you have to understand what you're all doing, who this project is for, and why you're all doing it. Ultimately, if your project doesn't sell, and if you can, don't contribute to the sales of a project, then you're, you're worthless, no matter how talented you are. So hopefully that helps a little bit. I know this was a little bit, mm, and no clear point in the end, but just challenge yourself to think about how to balance, how to understand that you're in an industry, you're in a business, but you're also an artist, and that's okay to be both, and um, there is a method to the madness, but everybody's method is a bit individualized. So you need to find your method and apply the best principles and learn from people, but take everything with a grain of salt and ultimately car carve your own path. All right, thanks.